Hello and welcome to the Metropolitan Museum of Arts virtual drop-in drawing session. In this program we bring the Met to you with a series of drawing activities meant to challenge and grow your creative skills. My name is Jacqueline Cedar and I am an artist and educator at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Uh, in my own practice I focus primarily on drawing and painting and in the past year I've been independently curating exhibitions with a wide range of media. Uh, I typically lead art making sessions on site at the Metropolitan Museum and today I am joining you from my art studio and home in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, during today's session we will be exploring expression, gesture, movement, and dramatic lighting as we create our own figurative sketches inspired by Henry de Toulouse-Lautrec's uh, studies of urban entertainment. Uh, we'll be using uh, Toulouse-Lautrec's The Clown, M. Jure, from 1885 as a starting point as we experiment with mark making, uh, as well as consider how we might use an economy or a sparseness of line, um, a limited number of lines in order to create uh, the essence or to capture the overall experience of a character's expression and uh, persona. Uh, you can use in this activity a variety of materials, um, be it from charcoal to markers to really any form of paint. I'll be focusing on watercolor and ink um, because of the fluidity of the media, but whatever you have available at home is awesome. Um, and so you can use a variety of materials. Um, you can feel free to follow along with this video or come back to these ideas independently on your own time. Either way, we really just hope that you will be thinking of this time as the beginning of an exploration into Henry de Toulouse-Lautrec's painting and process. Um, so let's take a closer look at this first artwork of inspiration together. Henry de Toulouse-Lautrec's The Clown, M. Jure, is five inches tall by four inches wide and was made with pen and black ink, which is now faded to brown. Toulouse-Lautrec drew caricatures throughout his career, beginning with the albums he filled with small drawings as a teenager. Spending time in Parisian clubs and cafes years later as an adult, he continued to develop playful and humorous sketches of the people he observed on site. His hundreds of caricatures were varied in style, and the clown is one of two distinct examples we'll draw inspiration from today. Let's take a moment to note our overall impression of this figure character. Toulouse-Lautrec has drawn a portrait of a person described in the title as a clown. The clown's face, neck, and shoulders are the focus of the image. The clown's head is tilted slightly to the side with eyes peering in the opposite direction. His expression appears quizzical and possibly surprised or reactive. Bold brushstrokes made of darker marks describe the clown's mustache, which takes up the majority of the image from right to left. Energetic marks above the clown's forehead move in a variety of directions, describing either chaotic hair or hat. There are brushstrokes around the clown's shoulder as well that suggest tone, atmosphere, energy, and potentially even reveal the artist's testing of materials and mark-making techniques. Some brushstrokes around the ears and eyes overlap and reveal the artist's early attempts at finding the form as he develops the face. Overlapping cross-hatched brush strokes around the chin and neck are used to describe tonal shifts that aid the artist in building depth and form in the image. Let's look more closely at the variety of ways he's assigning marks to the surface of his paper. The image of the figure, the clown, is made up of a diverse range of brush strokes, some that appear more quick and energetic, and some that appear more slow and methodical. The artist applies just the tip of the brush to achieve a thin line and the side of the brush to create a thicker line. Toulouse-Lautrec is also varying his pigment to liquid ratio as he thins down the ink to create lighter marks and adds more ink to create darker tones that contrast the white of the paper. Many of Toulouse-Lautrec's lines overlap in different directions to develop the illusion of depth or movement in the overall image. A second point of inspiration Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec's Madame Abdallah lithograph takes a different approach stylistically, yielding a more dramatic visual experience. This work is slightly larger than the first discussed, approximately 11 by 8 inches, and was part of a portfolio of images celebrating the cafe concert and its diverse range of performers and audience members. 
In this image, Toulouse-Lautrec describes a performer on stage standing near a curtain or textured wall illuminated from below. The dramatic lighting and perspective of the artist looking up at the performer gives us a sense of the relationship between spectator and stage. Medium and dark tones dominate the image with just a few specks of light revealing the figure's face and expression. Madame Abdallah's gesture and near silhouette takes up the majority of the frame, yet she leans or stands primarily in shadow. The figure's eyes near closed, we might read the scene as if we were watching a more still or quiet moment in the midst of a likely bustling atmosphere. The overall scene reads as if Madame Abdallah is either about to perform or has just completed her set. So today we'll consider how we might use expression, gesture, movement, and dramatic lighting to create our own figurative sketches inspired by Toulouse-Lautrec's studies. Take a moment to consider uh, the character you wish to describe, the person that you're choosing as your subject matter. You might choose to work from Toulouse-Lautrec subjects as a starting point, or you might consider working from your own imagination, memory, uh, you might even use a personal photograph as a reference material. If you choose to work from memory, um, I invite you, I encourage you to consider the last time you encountered this person that you wish to describe. Uh, and you might even take a moment to close your eyes and think about the last time you saw them, where they were standing, what time of day it was, what colors you saw, what sounds you heard. If you're using Toulouse-Lautrec's images as a starting point, you might also consider your first impression of these images. When you saw that clown's face or expression, what were some words that came to mind? Um, when you saw Madame Abdallah's gesture or pose, um, did you think serious? Did you think playful, quizzical, focused? Um, you might even take a moment to write down these words I like to begin with broader ideas and I often come back to these ideas later um, as I'm working and making choices in process about mark making and gesture and tone. We'll try two different techniques during this session. The first technique will involve testing a variety of lines to describe the energy of the expression you're observing. You might test your materials on a separate piece of paper first as you pay attention to how these elements behave. Notice how light a mark you can achieve as you add water to dilute the ink or paint on your palette. Try using the side and tip of your brush to generate both thick and thin lines. Start working from light to dark as you build up the overall image. This will allow you to cover, conceal, or edit marks as you go. Since we are working lightly and loosely to capture the initial impression of a person's expression, inspired by Toulouse-Lautrec's The Clown, we don't need to worry about details. Think about finding the lines as you move across, around the face, and feel free to cover or overlap areas as you develop the overall image. You'll find that if you work across the whole page instead of fixating on one area, you'll allow yourself more time for each section to dry and you can return to initial marks and cover or overlap them more easily once drying time has passed. Focus on the dominant sections of the face, the ones that stand out to you in your first impression of the person. Is it a facial feature or a particular expression? Focus on capturing those qualities and maybe even try to exaggerate them. These exaggerated features are what move an image from portrait to caricature and help us to understand the artist's perspective or attitude. In the case of the clown, think of the scale of the mustache or hair in relation to the overall image as an example of this kind of exaggeration. As the face develops, consider adding shading with hatch marks, overlapping lines, or brush strokes. This will help to build depth and volume in your image. You might also experiment with lines around the face to suggest a tone or atmosphere. Quick and chaotic marks versus slow and repetitive ones can either amplify or contrast the expression on your figure's face. For your next drawing or painting exploration, consider working in overall shapes or tones as you develop the image. Taking inspiration next from Toulouse-Lautrec's Madame Abdallah, try finding the overall shapes of each section of the figure as well as the space around them. Lay in larger areas of tone first with the side of your brush and wait for them to dry before adding thinner, more detailed contrasting lines or marks with the tip of your brush. 
If you're working like Toulouse-Lautrec, primarily with one color, consider leaving some areas of the page white to add contrast to the darker and more medium shades. As you consider developing expression, gesture, and movement in your drawings and paintings, you can keep these ideas of brush strokes, light, and shadows in mind in order to develop depth and atmosphere in your overall image. I began working loosely, sketching the overall composition of my painting with paint. I like to encourage beginning painters to get comfortable using their brush in the same way they might use a pencil. This way you can avoid mixing graphite with pigment and approach pure colors in the final painting. For my first exploration, Inspired by the Clown, I focus primarily on using the tip of my brush and develop shading with layering and hatching line and tone, finding the lines as I continue to add and edit the image. For my second exploration inspired by Madame Abdallah, I blocked the overall shapes of the figure with large areas of watered down paint and then continued to build areas of shadow by darkening the pigment in specific sections across the overall composition. You might consider where your light source is coming from before you start assigning shadow to your overall image. In the case of Madame Abdallah, the light from below signifies a theatrical space. Consider what kind of light exists in the place you are aiming to render and how that affects the tone and atmosphere of your space. You can explore these ideas with charcoal, markers, or really any form of paint. I'd recommend watercolor or ink since they tend to behave more fluidly without many material additions. Um, I'm layering ink because it has a tendency to dry more quickly and so I'm able to layer tone over a short period of time more easily. Uh, consider an absorbent ground like watercolor paper so your paper won't curl or tear as you add layers of watery and washy pigment. Once you've laid out the overall composition and spent some time rearranging segments of the face, figure, and shadows, you might also consider adding more details with different size marks to increase the contrast between detailed and larger areas of the image. I always like to take a step back from my work while in process and look at it from a distance in order, in order to pay attention to which areas stand out and might need reworking. I'm interested in discovering new ideas along the way and allowing the process to guide me toward more experimentation and ultimately completion. I try to stay open to making changes and taking chances along the way. Here's an example of two finished versions of these explorations. I shifted the light source and added some details to the space to shift the focus of the overall image, expression, gesture, mark making, and lighting. Once your drawing or painting is complete, we hope you'll share your work with us on social media by using the hashtag MetSketch. Uh, please also make sure to share your work with friends and family. I always find that getting feedback from a community of artists and thinkers who support your ideas and practice is a great way to encourage further exploration. Again, my name is Jacqueline Cedar, and it was such a pleasure sharing Toulouse Lautrec's work and process with you. Uh, please share again your work with us on social media by using the hashtag MetSketch and we hope you'll join us again for another session of virtual drop-in drawing. Look forward to seeing you all again soon.